Worth. Hey! Oh! Shout out to Chris Collinsworth. I know, it's shadowy with the hat on. I do like it, though. Yeah. You've gone gator colors. Well, I got the, um, you know, the hair, hat hair. salt and pepper. So. You got the hat hair. Yeah, uh, so I'm keeping now, the hat on. Are you wearing the gator color titleist lid because of uh, Blaine Kirk? Yes. Uh, hashtag? Yes. Now, you Is this the after the drill this, Yes, welcome, Googans. Hello. Uh, if you listen to the drill, you know we have a, a hatred with hashtag Blaine Kirk. He's a member of the staff here at 10 XL, and he's a diehard George Bulldog. And that Jay's coming in till like, noon or something. Yeah, he went ahead and bagged the morning after the Sugar Bowl loss to the uh, Longhorns. I'm sure it has absolutely nothing to do with football. A little frustrating because it's also schedule. something we like to call around here payday. Payday. No. That one hurts. Uh, and what are you like, going to do? I don't know. Has Prosser gotten his bonus payday from hashtag from the, uh, well, the bet? Damn the man. Thank you. Good morning. What's up? Thank you, Matthew. Hello. Uh, Yeah, so I I don't know if you heard. Has Prosser gotten his his comeuppance from Blaine Kirk from the overall season record bet that he had? Oh, yeah. He probably got that a while. Did he get that cheese? I'm guessing. I know Drew. Drew, uh, The last time I had him on with me, he talked about he had uh, some cheese coming his way due to a... uh, a bet he had with somebody regarding some college football. Did he? Yeah. He lost a lot. Or no, it was a Jaguar bet with the uh, Dolphins game. He bet with the Dolphins. Oh, yeah. And he, he said he's, it was the it was a bet he didn't want to win, but he was happy to win. But the cat the cat wasn't, uh, was giving him a little hesitancy. So um, these young guys, they make these bets. These bets that they don't want to pay a lot. They can't cover. Because they'll bet like large sums of money. 50 or 100. You know, like is, 50 or 100 yeah. is a lot of money. It's a lot of cash yeah. when you're a young man. It's a lot of cash now, out. quite honestly. Uh, so, Dan, how was the program today? Pete? I thought it was good today. Uh, a lot of fire and uh, you know uh, uh, energy yeah. aimed uh, specifically towards uh, number 27, who uh, I think we yeah. seem to feel is uh, riding the rails out. At this stage? Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, some people, Dan, I wanted to ask you this. Some people oh, wait. on social media good. feel like the commentary from Doug Marone yes. and Tom Coughlin to a lesser, lesser extent mm-hmm. indicates maybe a desire to actually retain for it because they're submarining its value by coming out like this. Okay, that's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, yeah. I don't Listen, necessarily buy it's, it, but... It's a, it's a big deal... And no one has said that he's done here. Right. I think they're. I think they're making their last gasp efforts here to try to, try to salvage this kid because he does have talent. And like I said a year ago, right now, Leonard Fournette. I mean, think about that first half of the Steeler playoff game. He was right. running all over those guys. He scored, I think, four touchdowns in the postseason. Um, he's moved to tears when we lost the game to the Patriots. Uh, so I think they're trying more to. You know, get him right now. They may have reached their, they may ha- have reached their wits end. They may be exasperated in dealing right. with him and saying, "Look, we can't get through to this guy." Well, yeah, I guess so. that's the question. Is this move with the guaranteed money? Is this a an irreparable move? Has that damaged the relationship to the point well, that it can't? At this point, on? the Jags would say, "We don't care." Right? You know what I mean? Right. So, and I don't blame them. And that Leonard created this, yeah. and he did. And it's not just. Listen, they're using they're using that loophole, if you will, to do this. But if everything else had been, if he had played fifteen games, right? Okay, and if he had done, or when he was hurt, if he had done the things he was supposed to do, or if he'd been, if he'd been everything that they wanted him to be off the field, right. they would have understood the injury a little bit more. Uh, uh, it's all the other things that have caused them to accumulation of all these things that have caused them to do this. And put themselves in position, perhaps, to cut bait. Yeah, like you said, he he handed them this opportunity. Yeah, you know they didn't they didn't look for right. some. This isn't dirty pool. No, it's in the contract. It's right. standard writing in all rookie contracts. Right. And and he didn't hit it. He gave him the out to get out of this guaranteed money. Yeah, Does, and like you said, it doesn't mean he can't earn it if they decide to retain him. He can still earn that money. It's just not. He just needs to grow up and become up. a professional. And maybe he can't. Maybe it's. Like I said, he's the kind of guy. He's always been the best player ever at you know in Pop Warner High School, college, and it's different in the NFL. And you got to accept that. And and obviously uh, missing you know all those games, and then getting suspended, and then even sitting out the last game. With him. how did he get nicked up? I mean, so now you got to wonder: Can we keep him on the field? Yeah. So there's a always- lot, a lot that goes into what's going to happen in the decision with Leonard Fournette. But I still think. In the end, listen, I'm not saying you don't get another running back, because I think you have to. Uh, but 
in the and, and if they decide to go totally different, then maybe they do get rid of him. If they if there's a way that they can use him in a trade, maybe that's a a, a possibility. Well, and that was something else that got proposed around the Twitter sphere the last mm-hmm. couple of days. And I don't necessarily believe that it's a remote possibility, but right. some said, "Oh, well, if you really want Haskins, and if you got to move up, could you package number yeah. seven and Leonard? Does yeah. Leonard still have that value though? Yeah, for another team." Um, no. No, I don't think so either. You know, not a not, ton of value, but he can be a throw in that makes you go, okay, well, we'll take him too. Now, maybe it's a case where if you're trying to go from seven to one or two, and it's you know a one in Leonard instead of a one and a three, right. maybe maybe that does work. Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah. I, but, again, it depends on if they're really ready. First to off, you have to do game. all your work on Haskins and decide, yeah. is, he the, is he the guy that is going to win you a Super Bowl? I mean, that's, right. yeah, that's the whole deal. You have to do that, and you have to decide and figure it out, and... And if you decide, yeah, that the answer is yes, then you do whatever you can to get him. I just feel like, you know, and I I don't know if you feel the same way because we haven't had this conversation, Mm -hmm. but uh, with the decision to retain those three guys, it sort of has put them on alert. And I feel like guys on alert don't want to ride into battle with a rookie quarterback. But I think it's much more likely that we bring in a veteran uh, for the next two to three years. Yeah, I would. That draft a guy high first round. Answer one of the cats here on the, uh, after the drill program. Do you really want Teddy Bridgewater? Yeah, I don't we know. We saw him in one game. He's, right. I don't know if he's ever going to be the same. And even at his best, how good was he? Right. I don't want Teddy Bridgewater. I'll be honest with you. Nick Foles is the guy. Right. And I think that's the guy that you got to target if, if you really want a difference maker at quarterback. It's awful hard to find a great quarterback via the trade. Because if you're a great quarterback, you're not getting traded. But the Eagles are in a weird spot, man. It's a weird situation. And listen, again, if Foles goes and beats the Bears this weekend, and then they go off to uh, New Orleans and upset the Saints, uh, who's to say that all of a sudden the Eagles don't go, well, gosh, what do we do here? Right, right. You can't keep them both, though. You can't. You can't. Foles has balled out enough yes. that he's, he's earned yes. a shot somewhere to be the man Now, again. what if Foles this week goes in the tank? right. You know, then all, are you guys going to change your mind, or is he still you, enough? Do you want to target him? Yeah. So I think Nick Foles is the best veteran quarterback out there who's probably available. But again, I would encourage, and I know the Jaguars will do their work, but you never know. Maybe there's somebody else who's available. You know, maybe maybe Matthew Stafford is available. Maybe Derek Carr is available. Or maybe there's somebody we don't even know. Maybe Eli Manning is available. Maybe you don't want Eli Manning. I, you know, so... Yeah. You got to put up a big board, name every dadgum quarterback you can think every of, and, vet, rookie, whatever, and list them in order of right. how you think they are, and figure out which one you want. Now, What's Matthew brings up a good point. He says we have grown to accept crappy quarterback play around here. Yes, we've, we've certainly got more than our fair share of it yes. throughout the years. We've gotten, a, we've acquired a taste for it. That's uh, yeah. different varieties too. It's not like the one type of crap. No, no. We've all, all kinds of different flavors and styles of no. bad quarterback play. We have all. Been horrible, and they've all been bad. And we'd like to just get one good one. We need one. And I think that's one. been Jeff's point that, and I think you've echoed this as well. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, this, gotta hit it now. Enough, yeah. enough yeah. whips. Whether it's in the draft or yeah. if you find a guy if it's Foles or whoever, you gotta have a guy who can come in and stabilize. And you understand, and you understand that's why there's a little bit of disappointment with Dave Caldwell uh, sticking around because he's been the guy who whiffed on. So why is he gonna? Well, play the odds. Maybe he's due to hit one. Yeah, maybe. And look, and, you know, he's. I don't know. His draft uh, scorecard is certainly not spectacular. Yeah. That's why I think there's a lot of frustration from uh, Jaguar fans, especially in the first round. You look at the the hits and misses, and really the only hit is one that you felt like was a no brainer choice. And when Ramsey fell into their lap, isn't it amazing that we're sitting here again talking about uh, quarterback? I'm just reading what some of the comments are. Isn't it amazing that we're back to where we belong? Not where we belong. Where we are we're, talking about. Stinking quarterbacks. Bad again. quarterbacks. Oh, know, it's so frustrating, It's so man. frustrating, man. When, it just, can we just for once, just for a decade, be that team that's like, we, hot, we got a guy. We got a guy. That's no like, worries about that. We got this guy. Everything else Let's is work fine. around him. Yeah. We got this guy. This yeah. guy's great. Yeah. Why can't, and it doesn't even have to be Tom Brady. Why well, can't we just have like a Matt Stafford? Well, again, <laughs> 24 years, you know, Brunel's as close to the franchise quarterback yeah. as we've come, and he was our first, you know, well, our second one. Berlin was the first uh, one. I don't. I don't necessarily like this guy. I'm not high on him. Marshall says draft Daniel Jones. I haven't seen enough of him. I haven't I have seen no idea. a ton of him, but what I've seen, Big I was kid. very unimpressed by. You were? Him. Yeah. Where did you see him in the bowl game? In the bowl game. Well, he scored like six touchdowns. He scored. I just, I just, he, the he's big. It, I don't know. I just 
Is he athletic? Is he a th- or is he a pocket guy? Yeah, he doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't yeah. do it for me. All right. It, he looks. He looks like a guy who's going to need gotta, some work. You also got to be careful. First off, time. none of us are scouts. None yeah. of us know exactly what to look for. Although I play one on TV. Secondly, you can't. You can't put all your analysis into one game. You know. No, you, that's you, the thing. You got to go. These guys look at every freaking snap the right. guy played. I mean, I. You know how is he? How is his command coming out? Does he identify? Does he? Does he get delay of games? Is he aware of the clock? Does he look off safeties? All these little things, and then ultimately, how accurate of a thrower he is. Because remember, when you see him throw in college, like even yesterday, I watched guys. You know, even Haskins, who everybody wants, and I get it. He's probably the best of of the group. Um, you know, he he misses a down and out though. You can't miss those in the NFL, well, man. And I think that's why there's frustration with the decision to retain. Well, you Hall. can if you're a Jaguar quarterback. If you're a fan, we've been missing those for years. And you try to default because, like you said, we're not scouts, we're right. not experts. So you try to defer to the judgment. But when the judgment is led by a guy who, the general manager, uh-huh. who it's his scouting department, his pro personnel department, and you see the guys that they've hit on and they've missed on, there's more misses than hits. Right. And that's the intel that Tom Coughlin's being given to ultimately make the decision. Right. That's when you get frustrated. It's like, well, how good is the intel? Yeah. yeah. How good is the scouting? Yeah. I don't know. And that that's also something. I want to trust those guys, but I have a hard time. Well, that's also something they're considering down there, I think, too. Are you going to make changes in their personnel department? Are they going to change some scouts yeah. up? Oh, we'll see. <laughs> so been, come in. There's been some scouts there have been there forever. Thanks, you know? Joe. Mike Dempsey. Mike cameo. Dempsey in the period. Hi. There he is. Mike Dempsey cameo appearance on After the Drill. He's doing a show right now. He's on his show right now. He just double dipped the chip, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. So you we'll see, get, man. You don't get paid twice. Now, are you going to the Senior Bowl? Uh, I don't think so okay. this year. Yeah, I yeah. don't think so. It's uh, I always I always like to get Danny scouting reports. Yeah, I know. I always find. Uh, yeah, good. a lot of the Googans are high on Greer too. Yeah, as like a second round guy. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. I, I I'm always so wary of guys. Rise, that, he might rise up to be a first round guy, Who especially knows? with you know the crop thinning. He's not huge. He's not right. a big kid. He can throw it though. He can yeah. spin it. He's you put up a ton two. of numbers at West Virginia. I I try not to look at West Virginia numbers because like, Gino everybody puts up numbers <laughs> in West Virginia. Pat White put up numbers in West Virginia. Yeah, guys put up numbers at WVU. It's yeah. Like, uh, well, they did. I don't know if they will now because Dana Holgerson's off to Houston. So we'll he took that him. job. Huh? He's taking that job, man. He got well, his money. How does West Virginia not? Be able to match what Houston's paying. They haven't ponied up. He's been fighting with them for years, trying to get a long term contract. They've well, just never done it. For well, him. so they came with deal with it. West Houston Virginia. came with twenty million. He's like, see you later. Yeah, you know that's what we're gonna say right now. See you later. Bye, Googans. All if right. you pay us twenty million dollars, we'll stick around after the drill.